If you're looking for the truth about the Teletubbies, you've come to the right place. <laughs> or at least you've come to a place where we're going to regurgitate a bunch of internet theories about a cult television show for babies and try to make at least a little bit of sense out of it all. Wish us luck. From demonic babies to furious televangelists, here are 20 scary Teletubby theories. Number 20. The baby son is actually a demon. Well, straight off the bat, we have a big one for you, because it turns out that someone on the internet had a late night, and while they were busy burning the midnight oil, they had a sudden revelation. So stay tuned, because it's going to rock your world. Now I know it's hard to believe that someone who, presumably is an adult, was staying up past their bedtime just to listen to music, but this is what they say was going on when the shock discovery was made. As well as staying up past their bedtime and listening to music, and who the heck knows what else, they were also apparently watching the Teletubbies. Yes, a grown ass human being was watching this utter swill on purpose. It was then that they had the moment that would change them, and no doubt you, forever. The baby in the sun that features in every episode of that kid's television series pulled a so-called demonic face. This revealed to our internet confidant that the baby must be an actual demon. There is absolutely no other explanation and certainly nothing to do with the interpretation of an internet addled sleep deprived possibly under the influence wrong and before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Finally, the truth behind Teletubbies. The Teletubbies have not only entertained countless numbers of babies and little children over the years, they have, also, apparently been creating quite a lot of conspiracy theories and inspiring a bunch of misdeeds as well. This is the super janky story of an alleged group of bad guys who are said to have dressed up as these characters and held a family hostage for over a year. You know, like the theory that the Teletubbies themselves are being held against their will and basically worship the sun baby and follow orders from a mysterious voice. Whatever, internet, you do you. But what do you think about all this bonkers theory being the inspiration for the show itself? As always, let me know all of your ideas in the comments section down below using the hashtag FancyTopic. Number 19. The Teletubbies are biogenetically engineered slaves. So next up, we have a particularly ludicrous theory straight from the mind of a stoned student who has stayed up all night and forgotten their own name. Brilliant. We know how to keep it real around here. According to the actual creators of the Teletubbies, there's no official backstory for the show. I mean, <laughs> come on now. Why the heck would a bunch of rainbow-colored alien-shaped kids TV characters need a flippin' backstory? This is a show for babies, and those guys don't give a monkey's butt about the backstory of a dancing baby talking oddball in a yellow costume. Because why would they? And in turn, why would anyone? But here we are again, this is the internet, and people seem to desire nothing more than to waste their precious hours on this earth asking dopey, pointless questions about which there are no answers for, so they get to make them up. Huzzah! This is how fan theories work! This theory goes that the Teletubbies are not in control of their own destiny. There's a mysterious voice from beyond that tells them what to do and when to do it. And there's a vacuum cleaner called Nunu, which seems to be there to help enforce the rules. And a bunch of other weird things that seem to be controlling these creatures in their every action. The fan theory likens the whole thing to an Orwellian nightmare, and yes, there is an element of that for sure, but that's essentially modern life all the time. So why would children's television characters be any different? Number 18. The Strange Teletubbies and Harry Potter Connection Honestly, people seem to be able to connect pretty much everything to Harry Potter in one way or another. Right, so this theory goes that the first Harry Potter book was released two months after the Teletubbies first aired on the BBC in 1997. So far, no connection. They then go on to say that Harry Potter's scar looks a bit like the shape of Lala's antenna, because of course it does, except it's only vaguely similar. Then, and 
this is the real kicker. They say that the whole thing is linked because if you take the remaining three Teletubby Santana and place them together, they'll then form a symbol from the later Harry Potter book, The Deathly Hallows. Well, that is certainly possible, but tell me this. Are the shapes of a triangle, a circle, and a straight line especially unique and unusual shapes? Do they regularly feature in children's television programs? And finally, are these shapes also commonly used in the creation of symbols? Now, you can choose to be amazed by the extraordinary connection between these two very unrelated fictional stories, or you can actually look at them. You can choose whatever you like. Number 17. They're giants in real life. Now, is this really very surprising at all? The Teletubbies have been giving a bunch of people who were children in the 1990s a bit of a turn. These credulous individuals seem to have found it difficult to believe that the Teletubbies were not small and cute little creatures, but were actually grown adults wearing daft costumes. Yeah, it's true. And guess what? Adults are kinda tall, and those costumes were kinda big. That means that when the Teletubbies turned up in real life, they were massive. Apparently, Tinky Winky, when in full outfit, measured 7 feet and 11 inches tall, and the others were smaller than that, but not by a whole lot. So yes, if you happen to come across the actual Teletubbies all dressed up, then they would be enormous, and not like those dinky little creatures that fit inside of your television. Who knew, really? Number 16. The rabbits in the Teletubbies garden are actually a gigantism species, and they did it in front of the camera a lot. The hill on which the Teletubbies takes place is also home to a bunch of rabbits. These are the only proper Earth-dwelling animals that are seen living where the Teletubbies do, and they would actually play with the rabbits and watch them scamper about and do other rabbity things. They're actually a very large breed of rabbit. This is because the Teletubbies themselves, as previously established, were rather big, so the rabbits had to be extra large in order to be in proportion to the Tubbies themselves. These rabbits were Flemish giant rabbits, a breed which can grow up to several feet long. The very longest ever was a whopping four feet and three inches in length. Oh, but there's also a drawback to using real life bunnies in a television show. There's something that rabbits are famous for that is decidedly unwholesome and cannot be included on kids' TV. That's right. They're extremely horny, and the rabbits on the Teletubbies were constantly getting involved in inappropriate special cuddles with each other all over the filming. These smooth hopperators were at it like rabbits all the live long day. Number 15. One episode has actually been banned in several countries because it scared children too much. The Teletubbies might have been a popular show for children back in the 90s, but apparently they didn't get it all quite right. There is, in fact, one episode of the Teletubbies that has found itself under fire. The episode was called Seesaw and originally aired in 1997. It featured a sketch that was called The Lion and the Bear, which doesn't sound too scary, but apparently the bear and the lion that were in the story caused a whole lot of children to have a lot of nightmares. In fact, they say that the sequence was so very terrifying indeed that it was inappropriate for the target age group of one to four year olds, and it therefore got banned by several countries which included the United States. You know, that country that lets people say whatever the heck they like in the name of free speech on the news without any kind of censorship whatsoever? But a scary lion? <laughs> that's just too much. It's literally why it was banned. Number 14. The Teletubbies' home has been flooded. Landowners are famously friendly, aren't they? I mean, most of the landed gentry really do everything they can to welcome people onto their land. They share it so freely and never could be accused of hoarding the land or wealth of a whole nation. So this story really does go against all the previous understanding of the aristocracy and their attitudes towards the commoners. The owner of the piece of land on which the Teletubbies was filmed was so filled with bile at the thought of peasants traipsing through her property that, sick of fans of the show coming to look at the hill in Warwickshire, she decided to flood the space and therefore make it impossible for visitors to access it at all. Such grace and such charm. Tubby land is no more, it's just a puddle in a furious woman's private property. I hope she's enjoying the heck out of it. Number 13. Tubby Custard. 
What in the world is Tubby Custard? No, it's not that, you pervert. Tubby Custard is the mysterious pink, gloopy substance that the Teletubbies consumed in their weird and kind of trippy television series. Some people are actually extremely concerned about this question, and it's very serious business, you see. And many of them have headed to Reddit to get all of their concerns out there into the world. After all, how would anyone be able to function if we didn't know what some Wally in a Reddit forum thought Tubby Custard was made of? Well, whatever any of these internet lurking individuals might say, the recipe or origin of said Tubby Custard is never revealed and remains unknown during the entire tenure of the series. Why? Because it's absolute nonsense and has no bearing whatsoever on anything ever. So who actually gives a stuff what it is? Number 12. Teletubbies to make a comeback. Conspiracy theories to surge. In 2014, there was an announcement that shook the world. The Teletubbies were set to make a comeback, and the BBC had ordered 165 new episodes of the television series for babies. This reboot went ahead and aired on CBeebies in the UK and on Nick Jr. in the United States, and it was, as to be expected, a relatively uneventful thing. But the popularity of the show continues on, and it's set for another revisit, this time by Netflix in 2022. The trouble is that despite this show being a pretty innocuous thing, which uh, essentially comprises of a quartet of brightly colored alien-shaped creatures cavorting about, being all silly and watching telly on their bellies, it has somehow drawn rather a lot of insane conspiracy theories. From televangelists proclaiming it to be a source of concealed gay messages, to being accused of dumbing down kids' television, it's always been a magnet for controversy. But really, isn't it just a dopey show that's given way too much attention? Number 11. The Teletubbies Have Had Babies Now, honestly, I really do worry about all of you. This is the absurd news story that when an episode of Teletubbies titled Babies aired, caused the internet to break out in hives. Yes, you lot got yourselves in a right lather over the introduction of the so-called Tiddly Tubbies. Apparently, the idea of the Teletubbies having babies messed with everyone's heads, and people felt compelled to discuss just which of the TV show's characters had been involved to make each one. I mean, come on now, stop reading so much into it. This is not evidence of copulation between your childhood television characters, it's merely a story within the Teletubby universe, which is, and I think is important to keep pointing out, a show for children's ages one to four. There's really nothing else to know. Number 10. The original Tinky Winky was fired. Back in the early days of Teletubbies, there was a massive drama that involved Tinky Winky. That's the big purple one, in case you've come this far and are still utterly clueless. Yes, Tinky Winky got into a spot of bother back in the day. Not only was there a lot of silly and gratuitous scandal that we'll get into a bit later in this list, but there was also a whole big thing with the guy who played Tinky Winky in the early days. In those days, a guy named Dave Thompson played Tinky Winky, but he was allegedly fired after only a few days. He has a slightly different story in which he says that he left the show because of creative differences. Even back then, when the internet was barely a glimmer of the monster that it is now, the rumor mill began churning in the wake of this event. The stories were manifold and involved sex and drugs and rock and roll in such a way that only a tabloid newspaper could produce. The story ended sadly though, as the original Tinky Winky died in 2018 at age 52 of hypothermia. Thermia. Number 9. The Simpsons references the Teletubbies all the time. Funnily enough, television is a self-reverential medium. Yes, it is strange to imagine, but the absurdity of the Teletubbies has reached Springfield, and The Simpsons does indeed acknowledge its existence. In the episode called Lisa the Tree Hugger, the couch gag in the title sequence has the family dressed up as the Teletubbies. They are also brought up in conversations between the characters in many different episodes over the years. 
The Teletubbies are just too weird of a show to have gone unnoticed in popular culture, so it does pop up all over the place because it's so very unique. It's featured, albeit briefly, in a Jeep commercial, and the Teletubbies have even turned up in Doctor Who. They've even popped up at a Red Sox game. They've been used in Saturday Night Live, and the Teletubbies have basically rocked up in conversations and references all throughout pop culture, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer to 30 Rock. They really are everywhere. Number 8. A black and white short featuring a Joy Division song being played over footage of the Teletubbies once went viral. You know, People like to play around with stuff on the internet. You know that, right? And here, we have a picture of the Teletubbies, in which the color has been completely removed from the image, and the Teletubbies have been made to look like they're on the cover of some sort of Scandinavian death metal album. People were naturally super quick to point out the similarities between the image and an old Joy Division video for their song called Atmosphere from the 1980s. This video shows a bunch of creepy hooded figures walking about on a hillside in a green rainy black and white footage, and everyone freaked the chuff out when they saw this picture of the Teletubbies looking like a cross between a murder cult and a low-budget music video. It is a bit creepy, that much is true, but tell me, will this picture be giving you nightmares? Number 7. Candidates for the Metropolitan Police's special branch were once asked to name all four Teletubbies in an entrance exam. Now this may seem super weird, but apparently it's entirely true, and there's a good reason for it as well. The police officers who take the entrance exam to join the special branch in the Metropolitan Police Force have had questions on their paper in which they're required to name each of the four Teletubbies. Apparently they had marks deducted for incorrect identification of the television characters. It does sound completely bananas, but the justification for the test question of this kind makes sense. The Met say that it's necessary for the special branch officers to have a wide variety of skills and knowledge, and being able to identify children's television stuff is a part of that. It's important for police officers to be in touch with many aspects of society, to be able to recognize and relate to all different kinds of people and situations, and therefore, understanding and identifying aspects of popular culture could prove invaluable in any number of situations. This, however, is only a small part of the examination process, and in general, candidates are chosen based on their problem-solving skills and political awareness. So, your encyclopedic knowledge of this ridiculous 90s television show for babies doesn't mean that you would be a shoe-in for the special branch. Number 6. The Teletubbies were given the keys to New York City in 2007. Some of the world's greatest contributors to the arts and society have waited until they're walking with a cane and collecting their pensions before they're even considered for this particular honor. So what in the actual heck are the Teletubbies doing receiving such a thing? <laughs> That's a good question. And unfortunately, the answer probably reveals rather more about how dopey stuff like this actually is when you scratch the surface. Being given the key to the city is a traditional honor, which basically means that the recipient is being recognized for their achievements and has therefore been granted the freedom of the city which is bestowing the award. There's usually a ceremony and a bunch of pictures taken for the local papers and the recipient will be given some kind of actual key. But it's more like an award than a key that will open anything. The honor of this freedom is usually reserved for individuals who have performed heroic acts or have achieved great accomplishments in their careers. You know, someone who's been notable for their good deeds or perhaps a worthy famous person, that kind of thing. Anyways, it's not really standard to give this to a bunch of television aliens. Well, it didn't used to be. But for some reason, New York City, one of the greatest cities on earth no less, decided to give the key to their wonderful place to these tubby numpties. Curiouser and curiouser. Number 5. They may look a little like aliens, but Teletubbies are actually inspired by astronauts. According to the creator of the Teletubbies series, Andrew Davenport, the Teletubbies were inspired by NASA astronauts, although they wound up looking more like aliens. 
Davenport said that when he watched footage of astronaut crews doing their thing in space, he was always reminded of the way that children look when they're exploring the world. This is a cute observation, and you can actually see this inspiration in the movements that the Teletubby characters make on screen. The slow and methodical way that NASA space crews move when they're wearing their massive cumbersome spacesuits and are restricted by the different ways that gravity works on their bodies in space can make some of their movements appear like a sort of dance. And there's no doubt that as they discovered the new and unexplored places outside of our atmosphere, these astronauts had a childlike sense of wonder and exploration that is unlike anything most adults on this cynical, internet-addled planet could even remember anymore. Number 4. Yep, the purple Teletubby was gay. And next up, we have the case in point for the collective cynicism and messed up ideas of our modern world. American televangelists, well, they have a lot to answer for, but one place in which they're frequently found to be poking their furious noses seems to be in popular culture. And in this instance, the popular culture that rattled this one's cage was the kids' television series, The Teletubbies. Now, what in the world could a show that's made for babies really be doing to upset a television event? evangelist so very much. Well, it doesn't take a whole lot, to be honest. And let's face it, most of it is hysterical saber-rattling bluster for the very cynical purposes of getting attention. Attention does mean dollars, after all. So, Jerry Falwell, <laughs> the televangelist in question, got all hot under the collar about the Teletubby character of Tinky Winky. It's important to stress the point that Falwell was an extremely, aggressively anti-gay campaigner and made it a huge part of his business to condemn homosexuality and spewed endless amounts of hatred towards the gay community. So wherever he sniffed a whiff of something that he could construe as just being a tiny bit gay, well, he made it his mission to screech on about it until everyone heard. One of those such things was the Teletubbies. I know, it's absurd. But Falwell accused the Teletubbies of having hidden gay messages. Yes, to babies. And he cited Tinky Winky's handbag as a major signifier. Also, the fact that Tinky Winky is purple, which is supposedly a gay pride color. Falwell lost his shiz about this and created a massive kerfuffle about the television series in America, especially throughout the Bible Belt where Teletubbies merchandise really took took a hit. For goodness sake though, get a grip. Number 3. Where the Teletubbies Actors Are Now as we've already discovered, the first actor to play Tinky Winky perished in 2014. After his somewhat controversial departure in the early days of the show, there were various different reasons that were given for his firing and or leaving. He said it was that old classic creative differences, but the show management said that they did not appreciate his interpretation of the character, which I guess could actually be seen as creative differences then, couldn't it? Next up into Tinky Winky's purple suit was Simon Shelton. This guy was a ballet dancer and choreographer who weighed in on the question of Tinky Winky's sexuality. Apparently, he was asked very frequently whether or not Tinky Winky was gay, to which he always replied that the character was meant to be a three-year-old, so it was all very silly indeed. Quite right. Dipsy was played by a guy named John Simmet, who was also a stand-up comedian. He would slip in Jamaican dance moves to Dipsy's routines and has talked about what it was like to be in those massive sweaty suits during filming. They would be pouring sweat, and it was a rather unpleasant experience for everyone involved. When the show finished, Simmet returned to the comedy circuit, and although people are aware of his past as Dipsy, he never brings it up on stage. Lala was played by a trained dancer by the name of Nikki Smedley. She's worked in various roles in children's television ever since, and most famously, her choreography has been part of the CBB show In the Night Garden. Poe was played by Poi Fan Lee, who took the role of the Teletubby shortly after leaving drama school. After the show ended, she had various acting roles, some of which caused a bit of a stir for their adult content. But really, these people are not actually the Teletubbies and have a right to pursue their careers in any direction now, don't they? She's appeared in many television roles and continues to work in children's programming on the BBC. Number 2. The creators sold the show in 2013 for more than £15 million. 
Now, in case you didn't know, a hit children's television series is worth a whole bunch of money. Not only is the opportunity to hit high viewing figures a real draw, but the chances to rake in the serious money with all of that sweet, sweet merch, well, that's just a gold mine. So it should come as absolutely no surprise that the creators of the Teletubbies, Ann Wood and Andrew Davenport, were able to sell the show off for more than 15 million pounds in 2013, a full 16 years after it first aired. It would be purchased by a Canadian media company called DHX Media. Number 1. The Untold Story About Teletubbies and here we have, to finish, a bunch of utter drivel. I have literally no idea what the heck these fan theories are on about, so bear with me while I try and work out at least a small tiny bit of it. Now, if you were to ask the actual creators of the Teletubbies, I very much doubt that they would tell you that this was the origin story of the show about a group of baby aliens messing about on a hillside, but so-called fans of the program have come up with some utter nonsense to explain it. Why? Who the heck even knows? The story that they've all fabricated says that the characters of the Teletubbies, even down to their names, were based on a group of children who were abused and neglected in a Bulgarian orphanage in 1995. Right then. They say that all of these children died on the same day, and they all had names that were vaguely similar to those that the Teletubbies then went on to have. Except that they don't know the name of this alleged institution, nor any of the real details, nor, for that matter, why the heck the TV series would be based on it. So I think that we can all say that this is a load of old internet cobblers. Just move on now, don't you? Well, that was more nonsense about the Teletubbies than I would have ever wanted to know in my whole entire life. How about you? Do you feel as though your Teletubby requirements have now been satisfied? I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that you're also going to need to correct the heck out of me on many of these points, so just go ahead and do that in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you!